you know how I know that the Fawny Willis story is serious? Like, it's real. Forget that the woman has now been subpoenaed to her boyfriend's divorce uh, court case by the boyfriend's wife. Do you know how I know the Fawny Willis matter is serious? The New York Times is covering it, and they're not covering it as Republicans pounce. They're covering it as if it really happened. The New York Times has a big story about Fawny Willis, the Fulton County prosecutor, who hired her boyfriend, Nathan Wade, to be the special prosecutor in the RICO case. And more is coming out about Wade as well, including the fact that uh, Wade oversaw an investigation and didn't take any notes about the investigation. Uh, it just more um, issues that raise all sorts of questions about him and his behavior. It's really remarkable that uh, the guy was charged with a detailed investigation and for the government and didn't take any notes, said it was all in his head. Everything he needed was in his head. And now you've got this guy who has no experience in criminal RICO cases being charged uh, with the criminal uh, overseeing the criminal RICO case against Donald Trump and a bunch of other defendants, has no experience doing it, and it turns out that he and Fawny Willis have been having an affair, allegedly, wink, wink, nod, nod, and now his wife is summoning her to court as, uh, I mean, y'all, this is, this is farcical. This is farcical, but the fact that the New York Times is covering the story not in a Republicans pounce or Republicans accuse way, but, oh, yeah, this happened and it's bad, tells you everything you need to know. There's there's just – I there's a larger lesson here, though, about ego. There's a larger lesson about ego and arrogance, the hubris of these people in politics – we used to have people in politics, not and maybe they were even then the exception to the rule, but humble people. I mean, take Mike Johnson, for example, the, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. He was kind of a backbencher, quiet, soft-spoken, deeply, deeply committed to his faith, rises to be Speaker. And of course, they savage him for his face, uh, for his faith. But he's a soft-spoken guy who, by all accounts, doesn't have a huge ego, unlike Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy climbed the ladder by desire to climb the ladder, and he got to the top. And when they removed him, he's like, well, I'm done ladder climbing. I might as well quit, as opposed to serving on his term for his constituents. He was done. He left. The massive egos of these people, Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, they think of themselves as the indispensable person that but for them, the world would come to an end. Along comes Fawny Willis and joins the ranks. Ironically, her hubris in this affair rivals that of the man she's prosecuting. She decides that she doesn't need to get the county's permission to drive up the cost to taxpayers in order to prosecute Trump. She, she doesn't take that step before getting the special prosecutor. She just brings her boyfriend in allegedly, who's got no experience, puts him in charge of the prosecution, pays him a lot of money, and meanwhile, he's doting on her. They're going on cruises together, all these other things. It's It really is just amazing to watch this catch up to her. Did she think that it would go unnoticed? That, you know, that's the, the sociopathic thing about all, all these arrogant politicians is that they think they can just get away with this stuff, that they will never get caught, that it will never matter. It always, in the end, catches up to you. It does. In the end, it's going to catch up to you. It is. And she doesn't see, didn't seem to think that it would ever catch up to her. And yet it has. And it could bring to an end this case. It really could conflict her out of this. And the judge could throw this case out. The judge could look at it and say, we can't reward this sort of behavior. And the best way to punish this sort of behavior to ensure it ever happens again is to kill the whole case. 
That would make if I were the judge and it's proven, it, what is alleged is proven, I would kill the case. I wouldn't pass it off to somebody else and find a new district attorney. I would say we can't condone this behavior, and the best way to disincentivize this behavior is to end the product that that incentivized it. That is the case. Kill it. Get rid of it. Dismiss it. Throw it out. He should throw it out if it's true instead of passing it to someone else and then let the chips fall where they may with her and, and accountability to the voters. She's the one who did it. The arrogance and hubris of these people that it, it, it's only them and, and they can get away with it. And and we see this in, in the rise of the elite. It's, so Brett Bozell and I were talking about this story of uh, German people training American teachers on how to teach kids conservatives are bad and make it all about in disinformation and misinformation. The World Economic Forum, I pointed out to him, says that disinformation and misinformation is the number one threat to society in 2024. Not war, not inflation, not the economy, not even pollution or illegal immigration, disinformation. It's because these people no longer have the monopoly. They thought they too were the indispensable people, the elite. And that we all had to listen to them. And they've been getting it all wrong. They got it all wrong during COVID. They've gotten it all wrong with provoking inflation, on how to deal with inflation. Uh, they, they've set people back. They can't admit it. They refuse to admit it. They deny it. And now, in their arrogance, they continue to believe they are the only ones with the solution. They've, they've gotten it all wrong. But they are convinced in their arrogance that not only were they not wrong, but they are the only people who can save us. If they want to save us, they'd all go away. And if this allegation is true, Fonnie Willis should resign. She won't. She's too arrogant to resign. But she should, just like Lloyd Austin should resign for his behavior in Washington. We are now surrounded with a bunch of people so arrogant they refuse to do the right thing when found out to be frauds. And that's kind of a damning indictment on the character of this country's leadership right now across the board.